So our big data governance framework really uh, can be expressed as a series of data dichotomies that people have experienced in their uh, own organizations. For example, there's the data consumer, data provider dichotomy going on. Just the tension between the consumers of data and what they're allowed to do and their role in data governance, as opposed to the providers of data, not just the technical providers from IT, but the providers of information coming from the business. So that's a natural tension in discussions of data governance that exists in every enterprise. In addition, there's the classic business and IT data dichotomy, which is a, a derivation from the consumer provider dichotomy, but is more explicit in delineating the roles of information technology in building and managing and providing the tools of data and data governance, uh, while the business, uh, of course, are more on the consumer side, uh, but they also play a role in generating uh, uh, analytics and building their own reports. So there's a very natural tension in the, uh, the dichotomy between the business and the IT community. There's also a very natural tension between the tools that allow data and analytics to be built uh, as opposed to the governance and control of the environment and those tools. So that dichotomy is more around uh, here's a set of tools and what can I do with those more possibility oriented as opposed to the governance decisions that are constraining and governing and managing decisions around what is the appropriate use of those tools. There's another data dichotomy that focuses on data in motion versus data at rest. There's a set of issues and challenges around uh, how do I manage and deal with data in motion as it's being transported from sensor to storage or from uh, location to location or from consumer to provider uh, or vice versa. Uh, as opposed to data at rest and decisions around storage, uh, encryption, and those kinds of things. And then there's a last tension in, in this model around uh, unstructured data versus fully structured data, and of course semi-structured in between. And with the onset of these brand new big data analysis tools emphasizing unstructured data analytics, um, there is a lot of a debate in the NoSQL movement, for example, on how far toward the structured world can I push unstructured analytic tools and therefore change the architecture and the approach of data analytics. Uh, so those are, again, a series of dichotomies and tensions in this model, in this architecture, that need to be addressed under the uh, umbrella of big data governance. So there are a number of big data governance challenges that naturally come from the uh, model that we've introduced. Uh, and uh, while there are many, we're gonna highlight four for you. First one is advanced uh, BI and analytics architecture. And when we talk about this advanced BI and analytics architecture, we're really talking about the integration and harmonization of all of the next generation and emerging analytics tools like MapReduce, Big Data, semi-structured analysis tools, et cetera, and combining them with your traditional BI reporting and analytics architecture, your data warehousing, your reporting, your analytics. So as you look at these new tools and integrating them with your legacy BI and analytics environment, you have an opportunity to re, uh, remake, to re-architect, to envision how your next uh, generation analytics uh, will look from a technology perspective and what they will enable from a business outcomes and performance perspective. So in that context, think about the idea of a knowledge-oriented architecture and a set of analytic tools who are, that are not only focused on your operational metrics of business performance today, but that are also uh, tasked with generating insights and innovations and knowledge uh, based on data that you haven't been able to analyze before. So that is kind of the vision for the uh, advanced BI and analytics architecture and the concept of a knowledge-oriented architecture that is within the realm of, of the possible with today's BI and next generation analytics tools. Another tension or another challenge coming out of this idea of big data governance is the, uh, it relates to the dichotomy of unstructured versus structured data. And in particular, uh, the tension around relational versus NoSQL. 
Uh, so in this uh, big data governance framework, uh, there has to be a way to make choices and make the appropriate decisions around what data must be treated in a relational way using traditional relational database technologies from Oracle and others. And what data can I manage and analyze using semi-structured and unstructured analytic tools coming out of the NoSQL movement? Uh, so what's happening out there in the industry is there is a lot of debate and analysis around how far into the structured analytics world, into re the relational database management world, can I push things like MapReduce, MongoDB, Cassandra, and some of these other new analytic tools such that I don't have to be held hostage to the license fees and the expense of a very traditional uh, data warehousing model with operational data stores and a traditional BI and analytics, etc. So a uh, very natural uh, set of tensions and uh, uh, but more importantly a lot of new opportunities uh, with exploring just how deeply we are ingrained and inclined to think relationally about all of our data assets when in fact uh, the NoSQL movement and semi-structured unstructured tools let us relax relational assumptions which not only have a benefit in terms of the information and discovery of, of insights that I can create but also has an impact on how much I'm spending to maintain a traditional relational set of uh, infrastructures and tools. Another challenge out of the big data governance framework uh, relates to the whole idea of what am I doing analytics for? Uh, again, a traditional uh, business intelligence and analytics approach is, uh, I call them directed analytics. They're really focused on telling me how is my business or my enterprise performing today along a set of predefined operational KPIs and metrics, if you will, financial performance, operational performance, etc. Um, but then uh, with these new uh, big data tools, uh, there's a set of uh, ahas and insights and discovery, what I call insight generation, that is now possible using these new sources of data and new tools, uh, which are not as directed as far as analytics go, but yet they're yielding uh, insights and information around which I can make very important uh, business decisions. So there's a very natural uh, set of tensions around the world of directed analytics and operational uh, metrics, operational analytics, if you will, versus the, uh, the insight generation process. And going along with that tension are uh, decisions around the role of data science and data scientists in the organization. Are data scientists uh, best uh, positioned inside of the business doing what they do? Are data scientists uh, position inside of IT supporting the business uh, and oh by the way because this is a very new uh, role and job title uh, we still don't know exactly what a data scientist does in the world of next, gen uh, next generation analytics and in the world of big data. So that's again another broad set of challenges that emerge from this concept of big data. The fourth uh, uh, challenge that we uh, wanted to emphasize here today was uh, also the idea of, of ownership, but it's in this case the ownership of the insights or the ahas that are potentially being generated by using big data analysis and tools. Uh, now those ahas may be generated by uh, a data scientist that's uh, in the business. Uh, they may be generated by an inf information technology person just who happened to be mashing different data sets together and coming up with uh, an insight or a piece of uh, a golden nugget as it were. Uh, but so the generation of those insights and the ownership of those insights and finally and most importantly perhaps the business decisions being taken as a result of those ahas are very critical decisions to uh, consider uh, in the context of big data governance. So in, the, uh, in defining this big data governance framework, some of the challenges uh, around big data governance, uh, there are some things that uh, you know, come out of this that we feel you should be doing. Uh, this framework will help you define and implement a big data governance model for your enterprise. Uh, such that you'll be able to clarify your business intelligence and analytics uh, framework and strategy and business goals surrounding that. 
uh, you'll be able to uh, have a stronger sense of the technology and the architecture behind the full range of analytic tools, not just your traditional analytics and reporting capabilities that we know so well, but also seamlessly integrating unstructured and semi-structured next generation analytics tools with those to uh, establish what will be your advanced uh, BI and analytics architecture. Uh, you'll be able to help make decisions around the ownership uh, not only of data and data sources, but ownership of the outcomes and the ahas and the insights. So big data does change to, in many ways the ownership and stewardship dimensions of traditional data governance. Uh, you'll also be able to define and extend the information lifecycle decisions around uh, how much data, retention periods, storage strategies, and more importantly costs. And oh, speaking of costs, uh, you will have to re-examine your total investments in data analytics, data warehousing, uh, big data tools, and understand the total cost of ownership of all of these tools in a composite view uh, relative to the business value that you're generating from the use of those tools. So the big data governance framework uh, we're suggesting will help you make sense of and govern all of those decisions for your organization.